In this lesson we will talk about query scopes. There are two types of scopes, local and global, and we will talk about both of them today. Scopes are basically used when you have to group uh, one separate query, more repeated one, into a separate kind of a condition which you would reuse all over your project. Typical example would be, for example, we have article list and article search. And in both cases, we want to show only newest articles, which means like from 30 days ago. So created uh, in the last 30 days. And this is how it looks. So in the list, we have two articles created at in the last 30 days, although in the database we'll have like 60 articles, but the, they are older. So we have two articles here. And then in the search, we just uh, get the request parameters and, for example, filter by user. And I have an example here of search by user ID 3, and it returns one article by user ID 3, which was written in the last 30 days. The problem here, or inconvenience, I would say, is this repeated thing. So created now 30, which would uh, kind of repeat uh, all over other methods as well. And we can define that as a scope to be more elegant. We go into our article model article here and we define function function scope for example let's call it scope newest article newest articles and we return query with that exact uh, condition so this here uh, like that, and instead of doing all that here, we do newest. So this name should be the same as scope usage here, just lowercase. So here will be article newest, and here we'll have also article newest. Shorter controller code, isn't it? Of course, it's not that readable because you have to know what newest is, but if you know the theory behind uh, query scopes, you will easily find that newest is here. And let's see how it works. We refresh the page for the whole list, and it should not change. Same for search, same here. So it reuses the same scope, just define your function, uh, parameter is query, and then return modified query by, well, whatever you want here, create it at uh, 30, or whatever you want. Speaking of whatever you want, that 30 can be also changeable, and that's another uh, kind of another uh, advantage of using scopes. So 30 can be changed here. If you at some point you decide that your uh, newest means 60, okay, let's change that 60 here, and you don't need to change any queries. You probably should get more results here. Yeah, we do have more results within 60 days. But even that you can specify as a parameter. So, for example, query days, right? So, this will be a parameter. And then you specify that parameter, or actually even that way. So, default is 30, but you can override it. So, in this case, it will be 30 days. But in this case, let's take 90 days. And let's see how it works. So, newest article in the whole list are uh, specified by 30 days, but user ID 3 is 90 days, and probably, uh, let's put, not 90 days, but something bigger, like 900 days. So it would return more. Yeah, exactly. So within 900 days, there are two articles. Now let's talk about global scopes. So scopes to reuse uh, the queries even more globally. So imagine that you want to uh, filter articles only by a separate user, by a certain user who is logged in. So typical example is multi-tenancy applications where user can see only his own article. So instead of newest, let's skip that. For example, you want to query where user ID equals, let's let's say that it's one for, for simplicity, just, uh, sorry, and just put this here, right? So everywhere, uh, and and the thing is uh, that in the in the CRUD example for multi multi tenancy, you probably should should filter it everywhere. 
So edit function would be where ID or probably find something like that should be the code for edit article and even here you need to you need to ensure that uh, the person is not uh, accessing a different article by different persons so basically constantly you would have where user ID equals one or equals in reality it would be auth ID or something like that uh, but to simplify that, uh, let's put it one. Let's hard code one for now. So to avoid that in every statement, uh, global scopes come as help. So article, model. In the model, we define a scope uh, in a boot method of model. And this is the code I usually copy from official Laravel documentation because it's pretty sophisticated and I don't remember it by heart. So in the model, we specify boot model. Uh, it's kind of a core model, which is called every time the model is uh, created. And it has parent boot, and then you can put whatever statement you want. So here, static add global scope, whatever is like uh, user, fil user filter. This is a name, you don't have to, there are no rules here, just put whatever you want there. And builder should be, here on top as well and then you can specify the same where clause as here so where user id 1 where user id 1 okay and here you don't need to specify anything so in our case article all it seems that it would be returning all the articles right all the 60 but since we are adding global scope in the model on the model level, it will use that filter. Let's try it out. In our articles list, it should show three articles instead of 60. So this is a global scope thing. So if you're using global scope on a model level, you just delete all the queries that are related to that. And Eloquent would use global scope first and then apply anything anything else you have here actually no that was wrong well yeah that was probably a bad example but uh, but still you get the point so you have a global scope and then you will use it here and uh, even here you can uh, kind of uh, do it more conveniently so instead of using this function you can create a separate class if this function is more uh, kind of more sophisticated for you and you don't want uh, to be uh, cluttering your model you can create a separate class like app scopes let's create a folder scopes and then we create a new file uh, article user scope .php. and then again I will copy the code from the official eloquent documentation uh, this is the one so this is the class namespace app scopes as the folder I've just created. Uh, the class name should be the same as as the file name article user scope, and then we reuse that here. So where user ID one user ID one. That's it. And then from here we remove that. So undo 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 everything. Okay, so that scope is on the separate class level, but we still need to register it. So kind of will redo things, but in a simple way. So same boot method in the model, but instead of adding the scope there, we will just assign the scope class. Uh, it's not age scope, it will be article user scope. That, uh, and I guess that's it. And the same rules apply. So instead of all, it would show three articles which are filtered by user ID. Let's try that. Refresh. No errors, same three articles. So this is how global scopes work. Basically, you create a class or you add your own where statement. Then in model boot method, you register it. And then you just uh, fill it in. You just actually skip it everywhere else. So in all your uh, query uh, eloquent queries, that scope will be applied.
And with that, I want to give you a final notice here. Be careful with global scopes because they are not easily readable. For example, imagine a new developer come to project and sees this and he assumes that there are only three articles in the database because it uh, shows three and he wouldn't understand what, why it's not returning all of them. He returns only three. And if the developer is more junior level, he wouldn't understand that there are scopes and this is the filter where it actually works. So be careful with global scopes. Comment the code, something like uh, filtered by uh, active user. Uh, also, there is another thing where you can remove global scopes. So let's get back to Laravel documentation for a while. You can uh, remove global scopes uh, in a certain uh, in, a, in a certain place. So, for example, in uh, one of the methods in controller, you could specify this. So without global scope, and then go with your where statements further. So uh, final note, be careful with global scopes. It's a really convenient feature, but uh, quite dangerous.